Hi, it's Sarah Kate and I'm at the Fitzwilliam Museum thinking about springtime and in particular that wonderful painting by Monet. I've decided to draw some apple blossom. In fact, a friend asked if I would draw it. Um, I'm using some Somerset paper, which is something that um, I use as an offcut really from the printing um, workshops at the Kerwin. I'm using um, a soft pencil and I'm very lightly sketching in the petals. So I've spent a bit of time examining my flowers, the buds and the stems. And what I do is I plot out my composition by drawing a set of circles and ellipses. And then I situate the centre of the flower in the centre of the circle or the ellipse. And then I start to gently draw in the various petal groups. And then in botanical drawing, I tend to not copy photographs. I look at the real flower. I take photographs and as flowers change in the environment inside because it's a little bit warmer they tend to open up so it's good to have a reference. Also I move things around so I actually want some of the very deep pinks of some of the buds and I'll put some of those photographs up on this video as well. So I want some of those pink pink blush of the um, but so I'll, I'll add those probably around here and maybe some up here and then I'll start to add the leaves and then the stem, the stalk and branch of the tree will be here and it's just a very simple composition so I don't put anything around the outside it's just a very simple botanical drawing. You can choose anything, you can choose something from your own garden or maybe some flowers that you can get from um, a shop. Well, I hope you enjoyed plotting in your uh, drawing. My tip really is to plot it out first before you go into any detail and also very lightly. You don't want to be doing, as I've said before, a drawing and then filling in the lines. We don't want it to be greyed by the lead of the pencil. We want the paints to be really, really bright and vibrant. As you can see, I've just finished the sketching of my apple blossom. And I've started to look at the colours and I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm going to be using this rose madder which I bought in a tube because it's very intense pigment and I much prefer to have this um, as my only colour and then mix it perhaps with a little bit of white which will make it opaque but I'm going to be working very gently and very softly a bit like the blossom itself. You can't really mix pink terribly easily and Rose Madder is a, such a beautiful colour that I would recommend this if you can get hold of it. But if not, don't worry, use the bluey pink red, which in my palette box is this one. So that's alizarin because this will make a really nice soft pink if mixed with the white. If you start to use this one, this is a cadmium it will make an orange and when it's added with white will make a peach which is lovely if you're doing um, some fruit but not so good for today doing our apple blossom so let's see how we get on and remember nice brushes and clean water and I've just done that selected my brushes and got them ready enjoy see you later I've started adding the rose madder to a dampened area of a petal. So I'm just putting the clean water onto that petal form where I want it to form an edge. And then I kind of mixed a little bit of my rose madder very lightly to make a bit of a wash. And then I'm just going to add it into this petal. And the reason I'm doing it like this is so that I can do a very gradual layering but I want it to be very loose and washy and let it flow and have its own life because it's kind of how the petals look they look absolutely beautiful and they form this natural soft almost silken color scheme of the gentle pink on the white and then you can Encourage that bleed just by adding some more clean water and very slowly encouraging it to bleed. But we're doing it really softly with some attention and care and just enjoying it. 
love doing this type of painting. It's so different from the other things that I do, which are larger and more abstract. This gives me a real focus. And I think at the moment I really need this focus because I don't know about you, but I've kind of been suffering a bit from a scattered mind and being overly distracted. So I'm just gonna keep building up those petals and layers and softening them. Remember, you can soften them again. You can go back in and soften them. I'm gonna gradually build up the areas of color. And I want it to balance, so I'm not doing one flower, then another, and then another. I'm doing all of those deeper pinks to start off with. So I'm gonna be going into the buds next, I think, because they've also got some deeper pink. I've been painting now for about an hour and I've got to this stage so I've started to add in the greens on the leaves. The blossom is starting to look nice and bringing out some of the tones as well and I could just put in the little spur, the little branch that the blossoms are attached to. I use the ultramarine in my palette as my shadow tone and I just blend it into the green or the brown to make a darker tone of that colour. I don't want to be adding black because that will make it far too dark and it will kill the softness of this particular blossom. So we're just working very, very gently and slowly. My tip is to vary your brush size. So go between a very fine brush and a slightly larger one so that you've got some control over what you're doing. So the brush that I'm using at the moment, you can see here, I've got these two, so a zero and a four, and they go to a beautiful point, which means I can get some real detail. And my palette, I've got my greens there, as well as this beautiful uh, rose madder. Now, I've started as well to look at the yellows because my yellows are quite limited in this box. So I've just mixed a little bit of the two together to get the very soft color in the middle. So you can see those starting to come out and I've put it in just very loosely at the moment but I'll start to work those in a bit more. As a rule of thumb just go very slowly and find your way through this otherwise it could go flat quite quickly so just work very gently and work in the direction that the plant would grow so from the stem to the tip that is the general way of working very slowly and stroke the paint onto the paper as you go.